Hey, what's up everyone? Kino here. And I wanted to do a quick reaction to Attack on Titan. Now, I know what you might be saying. Kino, I thought you hated anime. You say that all the time. Uh, well, one, I'm kind of memeing. Uh, I do actually... I don't hate anime. I just don't watch a whole lot of it. Um, I've seen a couple of like the major stuff, including Attack on Titan, which I'm going to talk about here. And I'm also trying to watch uh, more anime. I'm actually making a video where I kind of document my journey as I kind of um, expand my knowledge of anime as I watch some different series. And Attack on Titan will be one of them. Um, but I've been watching it for a little while now. I was introduced to it by a friend who, like, absolutely loved Attack on Titan. She said it was, like, the best thing ever. I she sat me down and had me watch it. Um, and over time, my thoughts on the series have kind of evolved and changed as this new season has finally wrapped up. Um, season 4. I don't know if it's called Seasons or not in anime, but, like, the last little chunk of the story, the final chapters... It's been like multi years, like between episodes. It's it's taken forever, um, but the 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 last one has finally come out. It just released yesterday as of recording this, and I watched it and I wanted to share my thoughts about uh, the finale and the whole series in general. This is going to be very off the cuff. Um, I've not, I I've watched the show, like I've not I've watched the show straight through once, and then I've rewatched episodes here and there, like the cool fight sequences and stuff. Um, but I'm not, I, I'm not an Attack on Titan expert. I've not read the manga. I've not done any research into it. Like I said, I, I barely even like watched this show through once. So this is not like a deep dive analysis where I'm like, Hey, my analysis is the best ever of all time. This is literally the reaction of someone who's just enjoyed watching it one time through does not completely understand everything. I could do, I don't understand everything about Attack on Titan, but these are my thoughts as a casual viewer, and I thought I would share them here with you guys for anyone interested. So, um, let me let me start at the beginning when I first started watching the series. Like I said, a friend had me sit down and watch it, and because she kind of pitched it as like, Attack on Titan is the greatest show of all time, better than anything, I was kind of going into it a little bit like, uh, you know, like when, when your expectations are raised high, you're kind of like immediately disappointed. And as I was watching the first few episodes, I was like, this kind of sucks. Like, it, it, I, I get what the show was going for. It was very kind of grim, dark, very serious. Like, people die horribly. They're, like, eaten. They're, like, stomped. Um, I should probably give a quick plot summary for those of you who are watching who don't know. By the way, there's going to be major spoilers for the entire thing. So if you don't want spoilers, don't watch. Um, but uh, the, the, the show is set in this, like, fantasy-esque world where there's these giant monsters called titans they look like giant naked humans and they they they're kind of like mindless creatures a little bit they come and they just grab people and eat them or step on them um and humanity only exists in this one city with these like giant walls that keep the titans out and they have various like military orders that are dedicated to like killing the titans or protecting the citizens but it's very much like a losing battle, right? Like that they're not going to really stop the Titans. It's that's kind of not going to happen. Um, when this, when the series opens, our three little protagonists, uh, a kid named Aaron Yeager, he's the main character, and his two friends Mikasa and Armin, they live in this little city by the wall, and the wall crumbles. There's like this unique Titan that smashes it, um, and then the Titans come in and and they kill everyone, including Aaron's mother. And he vows revenge against the Titans, and they basically train to become soldiers, and then they fight a war to not only defeat the Titans, but figure out, like, what's happening. Why are the Titans here? What's going on? There's a whole mystery element to the show. So that, that's basically the, the plot summary. Now, when I first started watching it, I was like, okay, I get what you're going for. This is a really dark world where people die. They kill off, like main characters throughout this show not not the actual main characters but like they'll introduce a character who's like hey it's our new friend in the friend group and then that friend will get eaten like it's like characters die all the time on the show it's going for like a game of thrones kind of very serious very dark take on the traditional anime fantasy genre so i, I got that um aaron himself gets eaten in the fifth episode but he, he doesn't actually die 
Um, and, and again, there's a whole mystery element to what's happening. Um, it relies heavily on like suspense and cliffhangers and stuff and very cool action sequences. I will give it that, um, they have this, uh, it's called ODM gear. It's like, it's like grappling hooks that they shoot out and they can like attach to like a wall and then they're, they're pulled up, like repelled up like really quickly and they can zip around and almost like fly around the Titans um, in order to kill them because the Titans are huge and they're strong and they can, e if they catch you, they'll eat you. Um, so they have this unique weapon that they designed to fight the Titans, which is kind of cool. Um, great action sequences, um, very, very serious, like action heavy, um, episodes that are like just really epic. Like you're like, oh my God, you know, we're fighting a war here and it, it's really cool. And you end up really liking a lot of the characters. Um, I, I will say they, they are a little underdeveloped in terms of like, you know, it's not, don't expect like a deep character analysis of almost any of these people besides arguably like Aaron, but even him, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's deep in terms of like anime level. Um, but they're, they are likable for the most part, even though they're, they're very like one dimensional in terms of like what they want. Like Aaron's whole thing is like, I will kill everyone. And it's like, okay, bro, I, I get it. Um, but you still end up liking a lot of these characters and when they die, you are kind of saddened by it, at least for most of the characters, I'd say. Um, the mystery element does get intriguing. Like I said, after the first season, I really actually started like getting into it where I was like, oh, I'm curious what's happening. Um, and I will say going back and rewatching certain episodes, it is clear that they were hinting at this, this ending for a long time. Like you do see signs of like, oh, stuff that didn't make sense the first time around when you have the knowledge of what the ending is and, and what the truth of what's going on is. You're like, oh, okay. It makes sense why that character was doing that thing because they're a traitor or there's this other thing, blah, blah, blah. They actually do this really cool thing too with the with the villains. Um, I, I do quotes because they're not really the villains. They kind of only seem that way for a little while, but um, it's eventually revealed that the Titans are they they were a weapon of the Eldian people, which is this like they're Jewish people basically. They they the Eldians on the mainland have like the stars on their um, armbands. It's like clearly meant to be like a. a a stand in for like how Jewish people were treated throughout history, very discriminated against because they have this power. Um, they eventually fell and Paradis is the last uh, little refuge of them. And then Marley, which is this like huge, you know, global empire has kind of weaponized the remaining Titans and they're using them to try to destroy the last remaining Eldians. That's, that's what the plot was for the most part. Um, and even though the Marleans are naturally the villains, right, because their opposite are the characters that we've been following this whole time through, they actually, the fourth season switches points of view and we actually follow the Marleans for a while. And I will say, like, I really grew to like a lot of these characters. They did a really good job of humanizing them, fleshing them out, um, even though they are a, you know, a vaguely racist, you know, genocidal empire even though, like, there's Marleans who are on their side. They're, like, like the indoctrinated ones, kind of. You really grow to like them. And even the Marlean commanders and stuff, like Margath, who um, are very flawed people because they're supporting the system, you actually go to be like, oh, I, I respect you, if nothing else. Like, they're not portrayed as, like... A lot of shows will portray these type of characters as, like, very weak and incompetent, and it's the Eldians who are saving them from everything. The Eldians are key, key to their empire, but... People like Margath are portrayed as very competent, um, even though they're kind of doing this immoral thing. So it, it does make you at least respect them. So um, really liked that. Good characterization there. Um, what I didn't like about this show for the most part, like I said, the, the serious tone of it, like super dark and serious. I was like, we could have used some more humor to balance things out. I like, compare it to something like uh, Full Metal Alchemist, which is another big show that I watched, um, deals with very like dark existential themes of death and destruction and sacrifice and stuff like that. But it's balanced out with a lot of lighthearted humor, which makes it very easy to watch. 
Attack on Titan does not have nearly as much humor. It, it has a few moments here and there, like with people like Sasha or Connie or something. But for the most part, you're like, nope, just more killing. You know, it's like that meme. I just, I, I just love killing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a dark world, and I, I could have used more humor to balance it out. I think that would have made it a little bit more of like a. a, a a nuanced story to have more lighthearted moments. It would have made me like these characters more. Um, I will also say the plot gets like really stupid. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's people out there that are like, Oh my God, the plot of attack on Titan is so deep. It's so complicated. I love it. I really think it's stupid, especially towards the end. They introduce a lot of these like, um, magical fantasy elements to the show that I think it didn't really need. Like the, like they like, there's humans who can transform into titans, and that was cool enough on its own. But then there's stuff like uh, time traveling, like psychic connections, where it's it's essentially revealed at the end that Aaron was the villain the entire time. His titan's ability was he can see the future of himself and all all the people who will inherit his titan. He has all of their memories unlocked, so he knows what he's going to do in the future. In his future self, like decided to, to kill the entire world. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that in a minute here, but it's like his future self was kind of controlling his past self and his father before him, but it was also him the entire time because it's what he wanted to do. It's I, I just think it's stupid. It's kind of like the hold the door thing from Game of Thrones. Um, you know, it's. Uh, People are like, oh my god, it's so cool. It it just kind of comes off as like weird and half baked to me, or I don't really understand it. Again, maybe that's just me because I didn't. I only watched it once, but I found the whole like, I get what they were doing. They're they're setting it up like Aaron is the villain the whole time. That's a crazy reveal, right? He was the villain in the in the future who set up the events again through time travel, psychic time travel shit that led to his mother being eaten. He sent the Titan to eat his own mother in order to set up these events that he would eventually take control of all the Titans and use them to destroy the world. he That's his plan. He wants to kill off all humanity outside of his people. That's actually not his plan because the last episode reveals there's even more to it than that. Um, but that for the final season, that's what the the plot is it's like Aaron has suddenly transformed into a bad guy and it's it's shocking um I didn't particularly love that I like I said I, I felt Aaron was kind of a weaker character to begin with like he was like very one-dimensional and then to have this twist I didn't feel it was earned it was like to me it's almost like imagine if Breaking Bad the plot of Breaking Bad was that Walter in the future gave himself cancer in order for him to become Heisenberg in the future. It's like, it's cool in like a science fiction fantasy kind of way, but it kind of robs the characters of some agency where I'm like, okay, so he's being mind controlled by himself, who was also mind controlled by, it's like, it's just too much. I didn't like it. I thought it was like, Aaron could have just made the decision to like, I'm going to kill everyone. Cause that kind of fits with his character. And I felt like it would have worked fine without that stupid element into it. Again, there's some people I'm sure you're like, no, 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 it connects to all the the paths and the you meet King y or Queen Ymir or whatever. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about any of this stuff. I just, I, you know, it's whatever. The whole I want to kill the world plot too, I felt was like, it kind of played out. I, I really hate a lot of these anime plots that are like, in order to stop the cycle of hatred, I'm going to, you know, kill the world kind of thing. Like, Naruto did the same thing, right? That's the the whole, all the bad guys, like, they want to bring about peace. And their solution is like, I'm going to mind control everyone. Or I'm going to blow up the world in order to inspire people to have peace. It's like, it's too high concept. Like, what happened to just having, like, a villain? Like, I want to defeat this villain who wronged me. Or I want to accomplish this specific goal or whatever. A lot of animes tend to lean into this very esoteric, high concept. Like, bringing about world peace or changing people's hearts or something that I find a little hard to ground myself in. Again, that's just a personal choice. I know it's a popular, like, trope in the genre. And I know a lot of people like really like it because it feels epic. But for me, I'm like, just give me more of a simple story 
with a character fighting against another character or trying to accomplish a simple realistic thing that tends to um be more enjoyable for me personally so i didn't really gravitate to his whole i'm gonna kill off every human on earth it was like okay whatever edge lord um the like i said though for the most part it was still enjoyable despite all these negative things because i was into the action sequences i was into the mystery um i will say let, let's move on to the finale because i know i've been going on for a while here because i want to talk about it because I actually, because the episodes took so long to come out, like, there were years between, like, individual episodes in the fourth season, I ended up looking up what the ending was, just because I wanted to know. And I found out that, um, one, I looked up what the ending was, but two, I also found out that a lot of people didn't like the ending. And so I knew going into uh, this episode that they were going to be faithful, and as such, a lot of people were going to not like it, um... I'm not too entrenched in the anime space, so I've not been watching a whole lot of it. Uh, like, people talk about it. But it seems like there is some, you know, there's some people who hate it. There's some people who love it. Um, I I tend to be on the side that doesn't like it. Not because of, like, plot or character reasons more so. Like, it does have flaws like that, like I talked about before. But more so the pacing. The episode was paced, like they were rushing through everything. And I was like, man, we could have set up, like, I don't want more episodes just because it took so fucking long to animate these things. But um, we could have had, like, some episodes maybe, like, where we slowed things down a little bit and explained a lot of stuff that was happening. They rushed through so much stuff in this episode that there's almost no time for the impact. Like, like Zeke, for example, very interesting character throughout most of the series. Uh, he's a villain, but he's got like this very interesting motivation. He's just kind of there in the finale. He helps out and then uh, Levi kills him, which I was like, we could have given this character a little bit more fanfare, right? Where I understand Levi wants to kill him and they need to for plot reasons too. But he's just like, oh, my philosophy wasn't right. And then Levi just cuts his head off like immediately. And I was like, what if he instead, like, was like, hey, Levi, come kill me. I want you to. And therefore give his character a little bit of agency. Because he's not... He, he's done bad things. But, again, he's not this one-dimensional bad guy. I felt he deserved a little bit of a better send-off. And I felt like the fight between Zeke and Levi... It's this thing that's been going on for a lot of the show. It, it deserved a little bit more than this quick, like, one-second shot of Levi chopping his head off. I thought it... We, we could have had more going on there. Um, the same thing, too, with the fight. The, where they're on the, the uh, Aaron's, like, giant bone carcass back thing. And they're fighting all the previous versions of the Titans. I felt that was pretty weak fight sequence. Um, like, I felt like the, the fight at the dock with Flock was way more engaging and interesting than this fight. Because, again, it's kind of like the Avengers problem where... What they're fighting at the end of the day is not real people. They're fighting, like, basically, like, like zombies, like, reconstructions of all the other characters. And, yes, they do something where, like, the characters before manage to take back their bodies and they, they help out and stuff. It's, it's okay, but there's no impact for me in this fight because it's, like, the fight with Flock was interesting because you were rooting for both sides. Like, there was stuff about Flock's side where you're like, oh, I respect this side, even if I don't agree with it. Or maybe you do agree with the Jaegerus. So either way, it was it was an interesting fight sequence because I was like, every death I felt the impact, even if they were kind of nameless characters. This one, when they killed a Titan, I was like, like, who cares? It's just a zombie. So I felt like that fight sequence kind of sucked. I felt like they, they rushed through a lot of stuff, even at the end here where... Um, Aaron, uh, or I don't know if it was Aaron or if it was the founding Titan, they released the gas that, um, uh, transforms regular humans into Titans. And the, the, the few characters have to leave behind their comrades because they're like, only the people who were Titans already and the Ackermans for some reason. I don't remember them establishing that, but wh whatever, well, I'll accept it. Only the Titans and the Ackermans could survive the gas. All their friends, including Connie, um, Jean, uh, Falco and or not Falco, Gabby and her parents, they all transform into Titans. And it's a it's an emotional sequence because you're like, oh my god, the characters who I've loved, like they're they're gone now. They're Titans. There's no way to get them back unless that you know they eat another Titan, but that's not really gonna happen. So 
it is a powerful moment in the finale, but they rush right through it. They're like, we get like, again, a one second shot of that happening. And then, okay, move on to fighting Aaron. Um, the fight with Aaron too, very rushed. We're not given a whole lot of time to see like his Titan fight, the Colossal, Armin's Colossal Titan. Uh, Mikasa manages to kill Aaron really quickly. I would have, that could have been a more emotional fight sequence. Cause again, we're invested in Aaron's character, but they, they rush through it. Now, again, you could say that that's diegetic because it's revealed that Aaron wanted it to happen. He wanted to die. He wanted them to stop him. His plan, as far as I understood it, was he was going to kill off like 80% of the population, but then make, but by letting his friends kill him, they would be heroes. And so the world would look as the Eldians as like um, heroes and they wouldn't want to kill him anymore. Again, I think that's a stupid plot. Even in the episode itself, they also call attention to the fact that, like, it's not going to work. Like, even, I think, in, I, again, they, we were given so much information all at once that it was hard to keep track of everything. But it seemed like Aaron was like, yeah, my plan was to do this, but even I realized it's not going to help. Like, there's still going to be war. Then what the fuck was the point of doing this? Again, you could say that's realistic that, like, Naruto was the same way, right? Even though he was the chosen one who was destined to bring peace to the world, there's still conflict. So they're being realistic in the sense that, yes, there's always going to be war or whatever. But if that's the case and you know that's the case, what was the point of doing all this shit, killing your friends, doing whatever? Again, Aaron kind of implies that he didn't have a choice because it's what his future self always wanted, including his past self or whatever. Again, it's too metaphysical. It's too high concept. I don't like it. It could have just been Aaron's plan that he decided on his own. Um, but they, they make it a little bit too sci, a little too sci-fi, a little too fantasy for my taste. Um, I know, again, a lot of people feel that way. I don't, I think they feel that way because they just don't like the fact that Aaron lost or they don't like that he was kind of pathetic at the end there. I don't really care either way. I'm not, I'm not super, I guess I'm not super invested in their characters per se. I I just thought, I mean, it was a cool show for the most part. It was entertaining. And the last episode disappointed me just because it, it wasn't entertaining from like a pacing and action standpoint. Um, but, you know, it was still an extremely popular show. Um, I'm glad I watched it. It was something to watch. I don't think I'll ever, I'm, I'll probably go rewatch some of the cool action sequences again. Um Especially season four had a lot of really cool. Like I like that fight between Marley and um, Eldia, uh, where they're all invading again. It's a, it's a cool f sequence, but um, I just don't find it that deep of a show. It was trying to do a lot of deep stuff, but for me, it just it didn't come together. It didn't coalesce into like a a really interesting story. It's just it's just a bunch of cool elements that don't really sync for me in like a really uh, cohesive way. So um, that's just my thoughts as a, again, someone who just casually watched it. I'm not an expert. I'm not claiming to be an expert. Um, and I'm not shitting on the people who do like it. These are just my thoughts on, on the show. Figured I'd share them here with you guys. Um, and I'll probably doing be doing some more like mini off the cuff style reviews like this for other shows that I watch. So um, you have those to look forward to. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more uh, of these videos coming soon.